welcome back to my channel beautiful minutia if you're new here my name is tiffany and today i'm going to be talking about all the books that i read in the month of december so it feels a little weird to be talking about december <laughs> because i have been doing a wrap up of the whole year so some of these books have already been mentioned in some of my 12 days of christmas videos some of them may have made it onto favorite lists or classic ranking lists or my read a read project there's there are certain books that definitely made it onto those lists so i'll try not to harp on and on about books that I've already mentioned at least once <laughs> on my channel, in addition to vlogging before I did the 12 days of Christmas, I was doing weekly vlogs. So I've talked about a lot of these on my channel, but I haven't mentioned all of them. So I wanted to go ahead and wrap up what I read. I read 10 books in the month of December, one of which was almost finished at the beginning of December and I DNF'd two. So I'm gonna go in the order that I read them, but I'm actually gonna start with my DNFs. So the first book that I DNF'd was The Autobiography of Santa Claus by Jeff Gwynn. This was actually for Victoria's Patreon <laughs> and it was supposed to be like, you know, a feel good Christmas story and about the origin of Santa and it's written from his perspective. And I really liked the beginning of the book. The beginning of the book felt so true to Saint Nicholas and his origins and how he started out and I just loved all of that and thought it was actually relatively Christ-centric at the beginning of it which would have been fitting with Saint Nicholas and his attitude towards things but as the book progressed as he goes he picks up companions and the companions just become more and more nonsensical to me because the author chose people who were actually like historically known characters to come be a part of Saint Nicholas's group of people who are then you know making things to help families in need and then it turns into making toys for children and I got about I would say probably about 60% of the way through the book before I just gave up <laughs> I just was not really a fan of it I just I don't know it just got a little too <laughs> out there for me and as I mentioned in my vlogs I was raised in a household that didn't do Santa growing up so I think that maybe if I had had some nostalgia and loved Santa growing up, maybe that would have made a difference. The other book that I DNF'd this month was for my Reader Read project and that's The Razor's Edge by W. Somerset Mom. And this book was just kind of like dull to me. It wasn't necessarily like it was just super bad. It was just kind of dry and dull to me. And it was really about socialite life in Chicago in the 40s. And I just, I don't know, I just really didn't care. And there are so many other books I wanted to finish before the year was out. So I would try another Somerset Mom at some point, but I don't think I will pick up Razor's Edge. Okay, let's get into the books that I actually finished. So the first book that I completed in the month of December was Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens. And this book I actually started on October 1st. So it took me a little over two months to finish this one. It's been quite a work in progress, me finally getting this book finished, but I really loved it. It's not a new favorite Dickens for me, but it's definitely like in the middle to upper middle of the Dickens that I have read so far. This is one of his earlier novels. And it's about Nicholas, who is a young man whose father has passed away and kind of left their family in dire straits, but his uncle is really wealthy and kind of underhanded and that's how he's gotten ahead and gotten his wealth and he's very miserly. So he decides he's going to help Nicholas and his family by finding positions for both Nicholas and his sister Kate so that way they can earn money to support their mother and themselves. And of course he has, you know, bad intentions <laughs> with all of these things of helping helping Nicholas and Kate but I just I liked Nicholas as a character but I loved Kate as a character I thought Kate was just such a wonderful strong female character in this book and I really loved a lot of the side characters were some of the most vivid that I had read and some of the Dickens that I've read and I just I really enjoyed it I always loved my time with Dickens so this was no exception. I completed two manga this month, one of which was Attack on Titan Volume 7. Don't really have anything to say about this one. I liked it. It's not a favorite volume of mine so far because the second half of the book was entirely a battle between a female titan and another titan. And I just, yeah, it was just, it was a lot of action, which is fine. It was good. I still liked it. 
but it didn't have like the depth and emotion and character development that some of the volumes have had. So I'm eager to get back to more of that. Then I also started a new manga series, Akuma Kuma Kuma Bear. And this is the cutest manga that I have ever read. This is about a girl, a teenage girl, and she is obsessed with video games. She plays like virtual reality and she plays like online multiplayer games. And so she goes to play and start her game and it tells her there's an update and everything is different once she gets in there and she just thinks it's a patch or an update that's been released. Little does she know that this is like not the game that she's used to being in and they give her like an upgrade and the upgrade is this bear suit which gives her so many buffs and abilities and strength but no one takes her seriously because she's wearing this bear costume and it was just a lot of fun and I really really liked it because I have recently gotten into video games within the last year and a half it was particularly fun for me and I felt like I got all of the gamer lingo like I understood what they were trying to say and stuff so that made it fun too. The next book that I finished this month was Joe's Boys by Louise May Alcott and this is the final book in the series that begins with Little Women and it was okay. So in Little Men, we follow Joe and this school that she has made for boys. And so Joe's boys follows then Joe's sons and then all these boys that were part of her school, but now they're teenagers or young adults going out into the world. And because of that, they're not all in one central location like they were in Little Men. And there are just so many characters in so many places. It just didn't grip my heart in the way that Little Women did. And even Little Men had some moments that really got me. And while there were moments of beauty and truth in this book, I just, I, I wasn't all that invested in it. Unfortunately, I really, really wish that I had been, but I wasn't. And I felt like the moralizing in this book was even stronger than Little Men. And it was pretty strong in Little Men, but it seemed like it had less reason to be there. I liked it, but I didn't love it. And I can't really foresee myself ever rereading it. Next up, we have another book for my Read a Read project, and that's The Memory Keeper's Daughter by Kim Edwards. I was trying to frantically try chapters from all these books for my Read a Read project, so that way I would have at least tried all of them before the year was up. And this book completely derailed me because the writing just arrested my attention immediately, and I was just sucked in. So this is a story of a man whose wife is pregnant and it's a snowy night and she goes into labor and he knows there's no way they can make it to the hospital in time. So he goes to a doctor's office, but the doctor's unable to meet them there in time. So he ends up delivering his own child with the help of a nurse. And as his wife's delivering, a healthy baby boy is born, but then she starts pushing again and he realizes oh it's twins and so he delivers the second baby the second baby is a little girl born with down syndrome at the time period where this book is set a uh, common practice for children with down syndrome was to send them to a home somewhere so that way they could be better taken care of and so he hands the baby to the nurse and just tells her to go bring her to one of these homes and he tells his wife that her baby daughter died because he thinks that that will be less painful for her than having to live with a child with disabilities and possibly a lower life expectancy and all that kind of stuff so he thinks he's being kind to her but over the years you see how this secret just completely eats away at this family, at their marriage, at his relationship with his son, which is the twin that they kept. And then the nurse was unable to drop the baby off at this home. And she raises this little girl as her own and advocates for her and her disabilities. And there were moments of this that were so good and redemptive, but a lot of the book is really just showing the damaging effect of the secret that this doctor kept and how it haunted their family without them even ever knowing that this baby lived. Next, we have The Thief 
by Megan Will and Turner. This is the book that I read for my Patreon because every month I pick a book that was suggested to me by a patron and I do a dedicated spoilery reading vlog for them. And this was that book. I really liked this book. This is, I, I guess I would call it maybe more of a YA fantasy because it feels a little bit too mature for middle grade despite the fact that it's a Newbery Honor book. I wouldn't really say it's a middle grade. It, but it's really slow moving and doesn't feel like your typical YA either. So this is about a young boy named Jen. He's a thief and has landed himself in prison by trying to steal the king's seal, I think, or something like that. And he ends up being pulled out of the prison by the king and the king's magus. And they want him to steal something of value for them. And they basically tell him, hey, you know, if you steal this for us, we'll let you out of jail. So he goes along with it and we're following their path to this place. And he doesn't, he has no idea what it is that he's gonna be stealing. And so it's, for me, the first part of this book was actually very, very slow. We don't even get to the place where he's supposed to steal something until the halfway point in this book. So we don't even know what he's after or what's going on until that point. And then it really picks up speed after that. But the first part of this book is really very, atmospheric as they're on this journey and quest because the author is really setting the tone for this world and I'm assuming the subsequent books because we get a lot of mythology where they're telling stories around the campfire and it feels very reminiscent of Greek mythology even though it's not but there is a decent amount of similarities between both that and also the world itself feels very Greek. The names feel really Greek. I really enjoyed this one. I like fantasy worlds that feel fleshed out, that have political things in them. And there's definitely political underpinnings that are happening in this book, although you don't see fully what a lot of them are until you kind of reach the end. And I like fantasy worlds that have fleshed out religious systems and social structures and those kinds of things. So even though this was really, really slow, I really, really liked it and want to continue on with the series. Next, we have a reread for me, and this is actually the group read for my Patreon for the month of December, and that is The Hobbit. We're reading through Lord of the Rings at the beginning of this year, and so The Hobbit was our group read, and my word, I just loved rereading this so much. And it felt so cozy and nostalgic and like coming home. And it, I just love Tolkien's writing. I love his world building. I love his emphasis on coziness because we're following hobbits and that's what hobbits love. You may be familiar with this quote from The Hobbit, which says, if more of us valued food and cheer and song above hoarded gold, it would be a merrier world. So I just, loved every second of this. I don't know what else I can say about it. Honestly, it's one that I'm sure almost all of you, if not all of you who are watching this video have already read. So I loved it. Next we have yet another read or read project book. I actually did pretty well in finishing three of them in one month. And then I tried chapters of several others, but this one is Candide by Voltaire. I've talked about this book in quite a lot of videos recently in my ranking classics and in my read or read project. So I, I don't want to go on and on about that. I mentioned it on a vlog too. I've really talked about this a lot on my channel. Suffice it to say that this is satirical and is Voltaire really poking fun at a lot of religious and political systems of the day and some philosophical thoughts of kind of everything happens for a reason and taking it to such a far extreme. And I can see and appreciate what it was that Voltaire was trying to do, but I didn't like his execution. <laughs> I really didn't like this story and I really didn't like how often sex and sexual assault and prostitution were the butt of the joke in the satire on different things and people just comparing how terrible their lives are. And it's supposed to be funny, but I just couldn't bring myself to actually think it was funny. I lied, there's another Reader Read Project book on here, so that's four in one month. And that one is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. And this is a very quiet book about a butler and his reflection on his time 
serving in this house that he served in for decades, most of which has been in the service to an English lord named Lord Darlington. He's reflecting on his time back as he's kind of going on this road trip to meet someone that he used to work with. There were moments of this book that I really was just very bored about where he's really getting into the minutia of some of his tasks like talking about the value of polishing silver and I'm just like I just no I just <laughs> so there was some of it that I really didn't care about and was kind of boring but he goes into kind of some of his history with his father and this co-worker he has and like some of the historical relevance surrounding Lord Darlington because he was definitely kind of an influential person who was hosting all of these political figures during world wars and so it was really interesting to see kind of how that played a part but what really made this book for me was the very very end where he's looking back on his life and kind of wondering how he feels about it because up to that point i feel like he talks about his life like oh this happened and it was no big deal because he's talking to you like he would talk to someone professionally so he's very much holding you at arm's length and at the end of the book you kind of see his regrets and then how he chooses to spend the remains of his days and not living in regret and trying to look forward and i really found the end of the book to be very poignant and thought-provoking and very good but I felt like I had to wade through a lot of kind of things that weren't very interesting or meaningful to me to get there. I think if you enjoy stuff that is kind of about people who work in rich homes like it reminded me of Downton Abbey except like I have only watched one episode of Downton Abbey so I guess I can't really fully compare it but it reminds me of that where there's a lot of like behind the scenes of what it's like to work for wealthy people in this beautiful mansion but then it also reminded me in some ways of A Gentleman in Moscow even though that is a totally different feel that's a totally different subject matter but it's reflections on a life over decades living in this one place and there's observations on human nature observations on things that you see around you on relationships and things like that and the slowness of the book reminded me of those same kind of slow observations and interactions that you get in a gentleman in moscow but a gentleman in moscow was fabulous i loved that book this book i liked but didn't love so I can see why people do though, because there's a lot of depth and reflection there. It just is very, very slow and you take a while to get there. The last book that I finished in 2023, I actually finished on New Year's Eve, right before our New Year's Eve party at church. <laughs> and that is A Tribe of the Accord by Sean Michael Stone. So this is a book that the author actually reached out to me and asked me if he could send me this book. And he sent it to me a while ago in like October, I think. The thing that really intrigued me about this, because I have authors email me occasionally asking me if they can send me their books. And a lot of times my schedule's a little bit more full and so I say no a lot. But this book, I said yes because he said there's also a companion video game in development for this because he does programming and he writes, which is super interesting. And it's a fantasy, but not with like super deep fantastical elements. It's just that it's set in a fantasy world and it's set in more like the stone age. And so I thought that that was really interesting. So I went ahead and asked him to send me a copy and I'm really glad that I finally got around to reading it because I thought that this was really fun. In it, we follow this young girl, Adira, who has been raised by her father and she gets separated from him toward the beginning of the book. She has always longed to be part of a tribe, but her father has always stayed aloof and away from tribes and said that you can't trust tribes people and all these tribes around them. And so then we follow her quest to try to get to safety and rescue her father. And I really liked Adira. I liked her personality. I liked her growth over the book and the relationships to develop between her and other people that she encounters. I did think that there were some plot holes that just didn't make sense to me, but I'm kind of wondering if some of those 
will get resolved because this book is for sure left open for a sequel if the author wants to write one. So if he continues to write books in this world, there's a chance that some of my questions will be answered. So I don't want to be harsh about that. But this is a YA book, but it's one of the rare unicorn YA books nowadays that is very appropriate for the younger end of YA. I feel like a lot of YA contains a lot of language or violence or smut in it. And there is some violence in this, but I wouldn't say that it's like super graphic or gritty, but I feel like a lot of YA books are aimed more toward college students than they are high school students or even junior high who are kind of bridging that gap where they feel too old for middle grade, but they're too young for the YA that's around nowadays. For that reason, I found this book super refreshing and <laughs> just really enjoyed it. I thought it was very fast paced, very entertaining, very easy to read, but also very descriptive and giving you a strong sense of place. And I'm really excited about it because it's yet another book that I can tuck away for my daughter who is in sixth grade right now when she gets older, it's another book that I have to hand her that I know will be totally age appropriate in a couple of years. So those are the books that I completed in December. I did a lot of finishing before the year was up. <laughs> I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. What did you read in December? Did you have anything that you were super excited about? And are there any books that I mentioned here that you've read also? I would love to hear your thoughts on those. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and also subscribe so you can continue to see more bookish content from me and I will see you again next time.